hi everyone it's Agnes and I found a really good little nugget in this book prayer the art of believing from Neville Goddard okay so it goes like this page 35 the and why I'm reading this today is because many of you have got someone at a distance either physical distance that you want to be with they are in another country they're in another city or they're just absent from you even though they're actually close to you in physical proximity but they're far away from you mentally and emotionally as in they're not around okay so now Neville says the only thing that prevents us from making a successful subjective impression on one at a distance or transforming there into here is our habit of regarding space as an obstacle. Okay, I'm gonna read that again because it's really good stuff. The only thing that prevents us from making a successful subjective impression on one, as in another person, at a great distance, or transforming there into here is our habit of regarding space as an obstacle. So if right now you are Seeing space as an obstacle, as in the distance between you and someone else. Doesn't matter who it is, okay? Just question that about yourself. Am I actually doing that? Do I see this space as an obstacle? Okay, so continuing on. A friend a thousand miles away is rooted in your consciousness through your fixed ideas of him. To think of him and represent him to yourself inwardly in the state that you desire him to be, confident that this subjective image is as true as if it were objectified. So, to think of him and represent him to yourself inwardly in the state you desire him to be, so thinking of the person that's important to you, in this case, the friend, so you represent him in the state you desire him to be. So. It might be that they're loving and connected to you, okay? So you represent them to yourself internally, inwardly. Neville uses the word inwardly. Confident that this subjective image is as true as if it were objectified. So you feel the state within as if it were already objectified. Objectified as is, it's already happened on the outside as in the object, he's talking about the person as if it were objectified. Okay, it awakens in him a corresponding state which he must objectify. So whatever you inwardly think, feel, believe, and in Neville terms, whatever state you are in about a subject, in this case the subject of a person, Neville says, it awakens in him a corresponding state which he must objectify, okay? So, think about that. If you change what you are imagining, feeling about somebody, then that goes forth and it awakens in the other person, in him, a corresponding state. So which Neville says he must objectify. So, you see, it is about changing what you're doing. It's again about what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? So today, what state are you in about someone over there? Whether they're a street away, whether they're a town away, whether they're three hours away, or whether they're a flight away. Okay? Now, you gotta start objectifying him inwardly in the state you desire him to be. So if the new state you desire him to be in is loving, connected, happy, joyful, having fun together, that state, you must come from that. When you move around, you wouldn't be depressed, you wouldn't be lonely, you wouldn't feel unloved, you wouldn't feel unhappy, and you wouldn't be doing all this all the time, okay? Because I know a lot of you are, because I'm getting your emails. So, 
Now, I'm going to read a little bit more. The results will be as obvious as the cause was hidden. Okay? The subject will express the awakened state within him and remain unaware of the true cause of his action. So, the subject, meaning the other person, will express the awakened state. He will start to become what you have worked on yourself inwardly about, which was in the previous paragraph. And he will remain unaware of the true cause of his action. So as you've activated it in you, he won't know that it's you that has activated that in him. But see, whatever you feel about someone, that's the version you get. So they might act really great with you, but then if someone else has got a negative view of them, they'll act not so great with that person, you see. So everything is you. Everything is you, everything is you, everything is you, everything is you, in that. What you've got going on is everything. The better you feel about everything, people, yourself, work, money, travel, where you live, anything. The better you feel about it, the better it turns out, okay? So work on this, what you're feeling, the state you're feeling about you, about them, okay? So, thank you, Neville. I'm going to read a little bit more out of this this week because I've only done, I think, one YouTube about prayer, the art of believing, and I'm going to do some more. So that's the little nugget for today. Now, oh, before I go, I just want to share my own experience that that's what I did when I was in Sydney and my specific person was in London. It's me being in a state of, it doesn't matter that it's a 25 hour flight from Sydney to London. Who cares? Collapse space and time. I'm going to put that YouTube down below for those of you that want to have a look at it. But it was about believing there was a togetherness, you see, and feeling loved and activating the state that I was loved back. Okay, so that's it.